there is a perception, I think, borne out by investment numbers that Chinese money dominates nickel in Indonesia. Is that fair? Uh, yeah, yes and no, because there are, so, there are other, other uh, investments as well in nickel, which is not from, from China. South Korea, right. the Germans South as well. Korea yeah. and also domestic investment. Yeah. Uh, the smaller, smaller uh, smelters is basically invested by by domestic investor. Mm. So, but yes, the 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 main investor in the, the big ones are, are from China. But yeah. you know, we have our nickel resource in the country. So, you know, whoever wants to invest, it's going to be very attractive, especially when we have our political stability, continuation of what has been planned before, and. The, the election result, etc., etc. So the thing is that, uh, would you like to see more foreign investment in nickel? Yes, you know, non-Chinese non foreign investment. Yes, we we have currently, you know, last year in 2023, we had the target. Indonesia has the target to uh, for investment around like 1,400 trillion, and we reached that that number. And 50, I think around 53 percent are foreign investors, and it varies, you know, the the top investor is, as always, Singapore, because Singapore is basically like a sperm other country having a hub in Singapore, so we consider that a Singapore investment to the country. Yeah. Hong Kong, China, uh, Malaysia, and I think U.S. is number number six right now. But yeah. it's still, it's still, it's going up. I mean, the the Western investors are going up. And, uh, of course, our investment also in the smell that's yeah. considered as from U.S. So I think they are they're, they're coming right now. So I want to ask you to put your Cotton hat on as uh, the vice chair in charge of investments at Cotton, which is effectively Indonesia's equivalent of, I guess, a uh, chamber of uh, industry and commerce, uh, right? Uh, and I wonder what you make of the need to not just diversify investment sources, right? Uh, let's say non-Chinese investment into nickel and other mining, but also create more export markets because for nickel itself as you all know Indonesia does not have an FTA with the US which is a very very big and key nickel market for uh, for batteries it also does not have a critical minerals agreement with Indonesia similar to what it has with let's say Japan it's in the process right now I think do you think <laughs> this ought to be top of the agenda for the new Prabowo administration yeah you know because first is that we have the ability to produce but the Production will have to be marketed, right? Will have to be sold. Somebody Somebody's will have to buy. buy. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to need to buy. So, I think the previous the previous administration have done a lot of SIPA, you know, FTA with several countries. So, I think that kind of uh, partnership agreement is like is needed by this country and needed by our counterpart as well. So, because it's a it's going to be a, a, a bigger market and we can produce more so that the price would not, would not crash and the demand will become higher so yeah I think if you talk about the mineral it's not only about the market but about the also the the uh, the increasing demand of this mineral for example like copper copper now 70% of copper is used for transporting uh, energy right so and the, the trend is getting higher because everybody wants to build new renewable power plant and electric vehicles so the the demand is getting higher and higher, while the supply is basically relatively stable. Yeah. So, but you know, it, as, as I mentioned, one size doesn't fit all. I mean, the, the copper and nickel is going to have a different market, different way of doing things. Yeah. Also, bauxite and other minerals as well. Yeah. That's why we need to have to be very careful in determining the the very right policy for each mineral.